<laughs> Man, I got some good ideas for this coming video. All right. What was that? Oh well. Yeah, maybe I'll do something kind of interesting with. Hey. Hey, oh, beard. Hey, tube users. Um, a lot of you have been complimenting me on my beard. Thank you, sincerely. Um, I've always said that the only thing that I hate more than shaving is having facial hair. But I'm also lazy, so this works too. Um, on to this video's topic and discussion, which is ear training and how my experience in that made me mildly different um, than other guitarists and musicians. Um, before we move on to that, I got a little bit of feedback from friends and fans alike and saying that a bit of what I'm talking about is somewhat over your heads. This time around, I'm going to be doing a lot less gear talk, almost none. Um, but it will be a bit more cerebral. Uh, it's pretty lofty of an idea to think that I can explain style as it pertains to guitarism, guitaristas, guitars. But anyways, let's start with a brief overview of what ear training is. So ear training is, well, exactly what it sounds like. Um, you're training yourself to hear and differentiate all the things that make up music, such as intervals, chords, Rhythms, and then ultimately, with all these things combined, um, you get melodies and then hopefully songs. Uh, the great thing is that with all of us who enjoy and listen to music, we might be actually doing some beginning parts of ear training every time we learn and listen and sing along to songs that we enjoy. And I feel that if I sing any more of that song, I will be shut down by YouTube as I cannot afford the rights to it. Mic drop. Mic drop thud. So every time we do this, we're learning melodies. And in my formative years, when the majority of our taste and interest in music develops, I was soaking my musical broth in flavors that I would say were a bit different um, than you'd expect. 
because of that, I think this is where I started to differ from other guitar players. It wasn't really, it was more that I wasn't in contact with a lot of the music that guitarists of my genre were listening to. Um, as a matter of fact, I basically only had movie soundtracks for the first five years I was learning to play music. And my first instruments were keyboard and saxophone. Um, I wasn't listening to much hard rock and I wasn't listening to the kind of music that had like guitar solos, things that you'd be listening to like maybe Van Halen. Um, I didn't really know who John Lennon was, let alone the Beatles. But even so, that's what a lot of my first guitar lessons um, were focused on. But then I would go home and be listening to these big full orchestras uh, afterwards and um, things like the Robin Hood Prince of Thieves soundtrack. And yes, that album has popular music with guitar solos on it. But aside from the occasional Everything I Do or Blaze of Glory, I was really more focused on like the workings of something like the horn parts from the Indiana Jones theme. Ba -ba -da -ba, ba -ba -da. And that's also as far as I'm going to push it on that one. I also had and was really into like the big chorus numbers from musicals um, like Oliver and uh, The Music Man. Uh, now the next music that I made contact with was that of Gershwin and Copeland. And then very thankfully, I had the amazing Godfather of Bebop basically dropped into my lap because of an oral report I had to do in order to pass my jazz band classes and um, Thelonious Monk. Um, Monk was life-changing. Uh, strangely now, I found him and Nirvana almost at the same time. And they were both really the big first foray away from what I had been listening to at home for years. Uh, to me, the songs, like the way they were crafted, um, between the two were in a way very similar in their discord in there was this music the vibe even though they were created decades apart they both left me with this feeling um, that was charged and focused but undirected at the same time um, even the instrumentation was very similar uh, between the two and also so much different and pared down from what I had been listening to for years. Uh, where I had like massive orchestras, you know, filling out the sound in my head. Now it was maybe three or four instruments. Even though I don't, didn't realize at the time, um, the similarities, like they continued in bebop as it takes and utilizes the rules of jazz but amps it up to 11. Um, so similarly did grunge in a way by throwing out all the rules of popular rock and the sound that it was of the 80s but kept like the overall structure um, from the songs and forms that they ultimately took from. That was wordy. So from all that, how did my style grow? Um, here is an analogy for visualization that works for me. Comedy, um, comedic style, who a comedian watched and listened to and admired. Um, what gives someone their comedic style? Um, some of you have heard that Tragedy and timing equals comedy. 
Well, to me, ear training and timing makes a musician. Uh, the feel that they have when they play, their timing and general placement of the beat. You know, are they playing in the pocket? Are they on top of or behind the beat? Are they more laid back? Um, we get that from what music we've been training our ears on. So I wasn't looking to have melodies that a guitar would or even could play. Um, I was looking for oboe and clarinet and didn't even think about the guitar as a solo instrument for years. Um, and that affected me later in my music studies as I didn't learn a bunch of guitar solos like other guitarists would. Um, and I, I know that it's an important tool to get better. It is. But for me, um, that was really boring. And from what little I understood about performing at the time, I didn't want to bore myself and then by extension, my audience. Um, from my aforementioned jazz studies, it meant that for the most part, <clears throat> all solos should be improvised. And I took that idea to heart. Um, years later, I heard Frank Zappa in an interview say a similar thing regarding improvising solos. And hearing him have a similar ideal somewhat reaffirmed my thoughts on that subject. And, and don't get me wrong, um, it is an amazing skill to be able to recreate a solo time and time again. But on the other side of that, when I hear, whenever I hear somebody say something like, I was at, I was at the Weird Al concert and he played every accordion solo, just like the record, woo! I, part of me would be all, well, then why didn't you stay home and listen to the record? Now, I've since learned that we listen more and hear more with our eyes. Um, and that's a different topic for a later video, but um, I stand by it. Um, and Weird Al rules. He does. To illustrate my point, friends and fans, when I do this. You go cool. And so do I, I get it, it's, it's cool. That ability is great and the work that went into being able to do it is it's awesome. But what happens inside me when I think about playing that every time the same way as the solo is What the hell? Uh, do I have to do another one of these asides? Look, that's how I feel about playing stuff in a way I think other people or guitarists would play it. Um, that does not mean that it's bad or wrong. Um, but for me, I, I go with the feeling that if I'm bored, then it's likely boring my audience too. Um, that rule of thumb is a good gut feeling to roll with. Gut feeling to roll with is my new song I'm writing. All right, so this now brings us to my influences on guitar once I had discovered it as a great soloing instrument. Um, I was in my early teens and playing in a band. 
Um, it was a time when it seemed everyone was really getting into several instrumental guitar artists. And I instead was getting into bands like Tool. Um, I felt very left out, almost almost vacant when listening to the instrumental guitarists' albums, uh, especially when friends were pushing them on me. I didn't get it. Uh, to a degree, I still don't. Um, the songs didn't have lyrics. Of course, I mean, they were instrumental. Um, but most songs didn't even have like an or anything but that three-piece band. There was no orchestra um, that I was really accustomed to as well. So, you know, no flutes or oboe or bassoon. But everyone, it seemed, was really getting into this music that I couldn't digest. And that's when I found my guitar guys. Reeves Gabriel, Vernon Reed, and John McLaughlin. Um, starting with Reeves, he came into my life with someone who I want to dedicate a whole video on, David Bowie. Reeves' outside playing inspires me. I love how controlled he was when weaving in and out of a key at just reckless speeds um vernon is known from the band living color and similarly to reeves has this passionate very unique voice on guitar that just urged me to follow and it fully resonates with me um while everyone was off learning solos from songs from other well-known mainstream guitarists, I was transfixed with learning everything Vernon did. Um, I have a story about meeting him and talking about his album, Mistaken Identity. I have such reverence for it because of what it means to me. You know, at a time, it was like finding the antidote to the toxin of overproduced guitarists that everyone wouldn't stop going on about. He had such different ideas and it was so fresh and invigorating to me. Um, but to him, he thought the album was this just kind of fun, almost silly thing where he got to stretch his creative voice with some nonsensical songs and sketches and really diverse melodies. Um, and we, we both had a laugh about it because how crazy and different a body of work can be um, from different perspectives. So finally, there's John. And wow. Um, I'd never heard uh, or knew of the Mahavishnu Orchestra. Um, I had bought a magazine that had a CD attached to it that had a unique mix of uh, Bowie's Scary Monsters. And on that CD, it had a cut from the album The Lost Trident Sessions. And I think it was called John's Song. Um, I'd never heard Fusion before or the early beginnings of progressive rock uh, for, you know, for that matter. Um, after hearing that song, I haven't stopped seeking that kind of music out. These aren't my only or current people I'm, I'm studying or into, but they were definitely the prominent and first ones. Um, I often go back to them and enjoy them and, and learn from them. But I'd say that these days, uh, it's Jeff Loomis and um, Troy Grady, especially for his unbelievable work in decoding guitar um yeah those are my my current guys now on to what i did specifically to better my ear um some of you aren't going to like this uh, there are no shortcuts i dove head first into an ear training class at a community college and i didn't know what i was getting myself into and it was very hard but I loved it. And honestly, you couldn't do yourself a bigger favor than getting into a, a sight singing ear training course and putting in the work if you want to become a better musician. Um, a big tip, 
It helps if you have someone to do ear training with you. Um, I would say take a friend or make a friend there uh, so you can commiserate um, because you, you will. Uh, next, I studied and got a degree in film scoring at Berklee College of Music. Um, now, yes, I did also study guitar while I was there and it helped greatly. But honestly, it was the films and really their musical themes from the films that I studied that mostly informed my style for phrasing and how I like melodies to form and evolve. Um, my course studies at Berkeley were completely reinforced by ear training and I got quite good at it. Um, I've also been in many choirs. Uh, I was even accepted into the Portland Opera for what ended up being an extremely short season for me. Uh, I got an I got accepted into Berkeley right after my audition there and uh, had to move to Boston, which was fantastic. <laughs> so where does that put me with my music today? Well, after discovering that chaotic driving force and sound that I craved in my youth, uh, it found me here with the pop punk band Non-Hero Elite. While I was playing and working for a cover band with residency at a large nationally known venue, I couldn't help but find myself looking for like-minded musicians who honestly helped to save my proverbial musical sanity. Um, we have an upcoming premiere on YouTube of our amazing show at The Mint uh, that was filmed in October. And here is a small tease. We're non-hero elite. Thank you so much for coming out. So you would learn from your mistakes. You would not take them away. Because you're grateful for the lessons that you've learned. Why would you do it all again? You regret it in the end. With all the people that you hurt You don't make sense Are you really sorry? One worth living Quick aside before we go, I've had a few people ask about my tastes in music and bands if it's changed over the years, and for the most part, no. Um, it's expanded, uh, but Monk, Gershwin, Nirvana, they're still on rotation in my mind and speakers at home. Um, one of my favorite bands is uh, Faith No More. Uh, as they grow, and change and evolve so does my love and respect for them um so yeah if there's like a poster up here on the wall then of course it's a band i i, I really love or i'm really into um like living color uh at the end here you've uh seen that poster in a couple of my videos um i was at that show uh shonen knife they are really fun um about the only thing i don't have a poster up or a picture up of uh is for bands that nuno betancourt has been in he's a phenomenal m musician just outstanding guitarist but phenomenal musician um he was in bands like extreme 
uh, Morning Widows, Drama Gods. Um, <clears throat> but honestly, it's his solo work that super it just connects with me it's uh the album schizophonic he is a tour de force he every song is completely performed by him on every instrument um and it's fantastic uh so yeah you should i would check that out um another band that's not up here yet uh is baroness um if you haven't already, I would check out their Purple album. It's their most recent, but it's, I mean, it's its just fantastic. All right, guys, lastly, I wanted to ask, what does guitarist even mean for that matter? Uh, aside from the fact that because of the word guitarist, you know that the person plays the guitar in some fashion, um, what does it mean to you? Uh, the idea to me even now is so nebulous and frustrating because we have to pigeonhole guitarists by categorizing them into a genre so that we think we can understand what it is that they do. So, sorry. Um, please, in the comments, tell me what you think guitarist is, what it means to you, what you think being a guitarist is or even the word uh the best answer gets a hug or a prize or a prize hug Drama. prize hug prize hug prize hug, prize hug. Prize hug. get a prize hug so what was it okay does a guitarist who plays with a lot of swing or vibrato or things that might turn you off if overdone what's the so oh, I think I get it okay the, the question is are there things that a guitarist do that turn me off that I don't like yeah but honestly those are things that I can't really do um, I'm not good at making silly or, or honestly <laughs> creatively making strange sounds with my guitar. Um, I shouldn't say silly. The ability is, I think it's cool. I think it's awesome, actually. Um, maybe I'd be into it more if I could make my guitar do the pew pew sounds I do with my guitar face. 